the concept of living yes, knowledge. Sir, thank you very much. Your guidance will prove useful for the students. Thank, thank you. you. Now, our second resource person, Dr. Aparna Kotapalle, ma'am, will guide us regarding the topic succession and inheritance. Ma'am has possessed 14 years of teaching experience in Manik Chand Pahade Law College, Aurangabad. Ma'am has completed major research projects, including consumer forums in Maharashtra state, funded by Ministry of Consumer Affairs through IA in year 2013. Ma'am, you have experience in various capacities, such as paper presenter, resource person, chairperson, coordinator. You have also published various international and national journals, uh, very useful article. Devang Mehta Foundation Award, Professor Indra Parekh Foundation Award 2017 and 18 respectively Lions Club Ideal Teacher Award 2019 is honored to her. Ma'am, the participants are very lucky as you will guide them. Please enlighten the students, ma'am. Ma'am. Thank you, Nikhil. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Am I audible to everyone? Am I audible? Am yes, I audi yes. yes, yes, yes. So uh, I must thank um, uh, advocate, senior advocate Safkal sir, for covering some areas which are very essential to be dealt with, even this second part. Um, sir has very precisely, nicely, he has talked about the matrimonial reliefs that are available under the personal law under the family. Now, uh, the task which is assigned to me is uh, discussing about the succession and inheritance. But let me tell you in the beginning only that family law or the personal law is the area which covers not only the succession and inheritance or matrimonial laws, it covers some other areas on which we may not be able to touch upon in today's session, okay? Uh, basically, family law is a law which essentially is um, revolving around our lives in the family. So since birth, since adoption, till tomb, whatever occurs, may it be adoption processes, may it be guardianship, may it be succession and matrimonial areas which are covered by um, Honorable Sapkar sir. This is called as personal law because it is our individual personal law. Because we belong to particular religion, this particular law is applicable for us. Again, for the beginners who are aspirants to be an advocate who have joined this meeting today, for them, let me tell you that in India, there are certain laws which are applicable throughout the country and they are uniformly applicable to all. But there are certain areas as like family law on which very elaborative uh, speech you have um, heard uh, advocate honorable uh, Sapkal sir. So these, some of the areas are the areas which are governed by the personal laws. That is the religion to which you belong. The religious laws Till date, they are being followed for Hindus, Hindu law, for Muslims, Muslim law, maybe due to paucity of time and uh, even the constraints that are provided in the course content itself. Uh, Sapkal sir might not have touched upon and even I would not be touching upon the Parsi law, then Christian law, but they are the laws available in India and that we need to understand. Now, Without wasting time on all other areas, just I wanted to make you understand that these are the areas which you need to study on your own. Adoption, then maintenance, then minority, guardianship, these all also are very essential to be understood. Let us proceed ahead with the succession and inheritance. As we have discussed, for Hindus, it is Hindu Succession Act 1956, which is applicable. For Muslims, it is uncodified personal law. Just giving you brief reference, or rather the reference in brief. For Christians and Parsis, it is Indian Succession Act 1925 that is applicable. 
and for all except Muslims, the testamentary succession is being provided in the Indian Succession Act. I would be talking about it later. Before proceeding ahead, we need to understand certain concepts. The concepts are like full blood relation, half blood relation, co-personary, and I would be very precisely telling you those things and then we would proceed ahead with the exact provisions in the law. Now, co-personary is a very important concept in the, in the Hindu personal law. When the law stood um, uncodified at that particular point of time also, this concept stood essential. And when the law has turned to be codified after the Hindu code bill, this particular provision stands important. Now, what is the meaning of the term and who all are co-personers? According to the Hindu religious philosophy, uh, um, what I would say, uh, the person initially, according to the traditional religious uh, views, it is male person, male Hindu person in the family till fourth generation, all members in the family, they were considered to be the co-personer and every co-personer has got right in the property, ancestral property by birth. That is one part we have to keep in mind. I would be talking about the changes that have been introduced, especially after 2005. Okay, because that stands important even from your CET course content. What earlier um, was ex in existence that Hindu personal law, uh, which was uh, uncodified, actually, um, it can be said that it was very much scattered. And that was based on the religious text as like Sriti, Smritis, and um, the customary practices essentially, and for which it was not applicable to all in uniform ways. The major task that is being done by the Hindu code, enactment of Hindu code bill is, it is now uniformly applicable to all, all Hindus. Now, Hindu, the term Hindu has been explained in the uh, Hindu code bill itself. If you uh, turn to even Indian Hindu succession, we find the definition of Hindu includes not only the Hindus, that the structure which has been provided in, as a Hindu, but even Jain, Buddha, uh, Brahmo Samajist, Arya Samajists, Lingayats, Vaishyas, all those which we can understand as offshoots, they also are included in the term Hindu. Okay, so. For Jain, for Buddhi, for people who are following Jainism, Buddhism, Sikhism, Lingayat uh, philosophy, for all of them, Sikhism, for all of them, the law is applicable. Now, the next point which we have to take into account, it further provides that it, uh, the, it, it, it is covered for all, rather it is applicable to all who are not Christian Parsis, those who are not Muslims. Meaning thereby, for those this law will, would be applicable now. There are certain crucial areas due to time constraint. I may not be able to go into the depth of that. But tribal community, if they accept that they are Hindus, I would be just giving you an out outline. If they say that I am neither Muslim nor Christian nor but those who basically this particular provision is created for the reason that Nobody shall uh, remain shelterless, legal shelter needs to be available to everyone. And hence the definition of the term Hindu, we essentially need to understand that for whom the law is. I hope this is very clear to everybody. Now with the changing time, when Hindu code bill was enacted, which provided that this law would be applicable to all, it also provided very recently rather in the year 1994 changes were introduced for Maharashtra and for other states and for in the year 2005 change was introduced with the perception of co -personary. I am dealing with the term co which we have discussed just now. Earlier co was a person, Hindu male person, all male members in the family till fourth generation and now female members also are included in the uh, co -personary. So they also have got right by birth. This is again very crucial area. Some cru cutoff date has been provided 
about the partition partition is getting every rather providing everybody parts of a property to which they are entitled to right this enactment provides for cut off date that is 20 20th december 2004 prior to that if partition has occurred they would not be entitled to but after that if the partition occurs and there are plethora of judgments nowadays we won't be able to discuss on the judgments that if she is married if the partition has occurred when and how etc etc just giving you brief outline about the term coparsonality that has been provided in this particular enactment now marching ahead basically what uh, though i am specifically now dealing with the provisions of hindu succession act let me tell you all succession inheritance laws basically provide for when anybody dies in test now again there are two terms which we need to take into account testate and intestate testamentary and intestate so testate is testamentary is when somebody has created will before the death that after my death how my property will devolve that is what is called as testament or testamentary succession but when somebody dies without creation of will how his property will devolve now the person may be male may the person be female so the laws provide for when a male person dies in testate how his property devolves i hope you all are able to understand it now the second point would be when she dies when a female member dies in testate without that is without creation of a will when a female member dies how her family property her, her individual property would devolve on whom what would be the share that the a persons would be entitled who would be entitled to and how much share they would be entitled to similarly we find the provision in similar means on the same lines hindu law provides the same indian succession act provides the same and uncodified muslim personal law also provides the certain rules pertaining to how the property will devolve again with the precise time limit it would not be possible but certainly the uh, area or other the broader outline i would be able to provide it to you now it is uh, uh, hindu succession act into account the uh, what one may say um, patriarchal structures as well as matriarchal structures i hope we are able to understand patriarchal structures are key refers to authority patri refers to father side so where the family is leaded by or where the karta remains male member or a male headed family is called as patriarchal i mean to say that the law hindu succession act provides for the succession rules pertaining to the patriarchal structures and it also provides the rules which are being governed by the matriarchal structures earlier there were certain laws in tarwar tawazi khatumba and aliya santhana and maruwa khataya basically you might be surprised to even hear these words these are the laws which are applicable to certain areas where the matriarchal structures are prevalent okay i would repeat it for you maruwa khataya and aliya santhana these are the laws these basically were the laws and now for them hindu succession act provides for the rules now see hindu succession act as like who all are hindus that we understood and second for them again there is a bifurcation one provides for uh, application for the patriarchal structures in general the provisions are being provided in the law and second part is marumakhatayam and aliya santhanas that is matriarchal structures now for patriarchal structures when a male hindu dies in test act provisions are being provided in section 8 of the act okay there are certain general rules that have been provided which refer to class 1 and class 2 years it would be very very technical dear students now what would happen is uh, uh, this particular enactment hindu succession act provides for, with for a schedule that is annexed with the enactment itself that provides for two classes of heirs 
if we look at class 1 it is inclusive of coparsners now in it, it includes female members also and along with that wife and mother very broadly i am saying so if we look at the provisions in class 1 you will find son son of a predeceased son son of a predeceased son daughter of a predeceased son daughter of a predeceased daughter of a daughter and it would be very monotonous to you in brief i am telling you that uh, class 1 heirs are basically the coparsners who all are included in the term coparsonary and along with that mother of a deceased person deceased is dead person who has left the property behind but has not created any kind of testamentary document as such so will is not created the person has died for them it is class 1 years amongst the class 1 years certain rules have been provided in hindu succession act that all those people who are provided in class 1 they all would be simultaneously entitled to have share this is one secondly they would be entitled to have equal share in the property so if a person has left behind the intestate property and there are certain relatives like son is there daughter is there mother is there wife is there so they all would be simultaneously entitled to have share simultaneously entitled to have equal share in the property there is a provision if there are more than one widows they would be taking one share amongst them if there are two widows if there more than that now we have to give take a reference of earlier lecture and for that i say that i'm thankful to sabkar sir while elaborating the provisions in hindu succession act as you have learnt just now in uh, sabkar sir's lecture that hindu person cannot marry for the second time when first wife is surviving or the first relationship is surviving in this particular situation the reference of section provided in the hindu succession act needs to be taken into account that the marriage that has occurred prior to 1955 when the marriages second marriage or the bigamy or polygamous marriages there were no restraints as such okay but keep in mind that bigamous marriages or else polygamous marriages they are not having any legal status in the eyes of law go back to the point that what we are trying to understand one is the class 1 heirs here is the person who is entitled to have share in the property after the person is in the state in marathi If suppose जर का कोणी मृत्यूपत्र तयार न करता मरण पावलं तर त्या व्यक्तीच्या मालमत्तेचा अधिकार घेण्यासाठी जो व्यक्ती असेल किंवा ज्याला अधिकार प्राप्त असतील त्याला आपण हेअर असा शब्द वापरतो आहे इथे त्या व्यक्तीला ज्याला क्लास वन मध्ये दिलेला आहे दोज हु ऑल आर इन्क्लुडेड इन क्लास वन दे वुड दे वुड बी टेकिंग द शेअर सायमल्टेनियसली and equally that is what the rule says now if there is nobody from class 1 it happens sometime that a person is deceased has left the property has not created any will and then uh, who uh, uh, somebody uh, has asked that uh, 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 what do we understand by the term intestate and further the testamentary document i would elaborate on that first and then i would be marching ahead intestate succession is the succession in which no testamentary documentation is created meaning thereby prior to death if a person has not created will mrutyu patra na banavta jar ka maran pavla tar tacha malmatte chi villewat इंटेस्टेड सक्सेशन नुसार लागते आणि टेस्टामेंटरी डॉक्युमेंट म्हणजे मृत्यूपत्र इंटेस्टेड डॉक्युमेंट टेस्टामेंटरी डॉक्युमेंट इज अ विल व्हिच अ पर्सन हॅज क्रिएटेड प्रायर टू डेथ अँड इंटेंशन इज टू गिव्ह इफेक्ट टू दॅट आफ्टर हिज डेथ आय होप द क्वेरी हॅज बीन क्लिअर नाव मुव्हिंग फर्दर विथ Uh, the law provides for if suppose uh, class 1 heirs are not there 
and uh, we were talking about rather we, we had taken an illustration wherein the uh, person has died and there are no close relatives as like mother is died earlier wife is not there she she also has died or else children maybe they he had no children or if they are also predeceased then what will happen in the property then maybe there are some remote relatives which are to be taken into account and for that we need to understand two concepts one is cognate and one is agnate no doubt class 2 s yes, which have been mentioned in the enactment itself does not directly move on to agnates and cognates but basically they are relatives which are not mentioned in class 1 so if suppose brother is there brother son is there you will find the chronological entries therein the rule is there that if class 1 are not there then class 2 and in class 2 again classification has been made so if first entry in second class is available then that person or all those persons who are in, included in that particular entry they would be simultaneously entitled but no other persons marching ahead if one first entry is absent then second entry, all those who are included in the second entry. If I uh, read it for you or I tell you the details, it would be little monotonous and you, you will not be able to get it. Just broad concept, try to understand. Class one, when are there, they would have the interest in the rather share in the property. If they're not there, then class two. In class two, preferential rights have been created. Classification has been mentioned. If first entry is there, all those who are maintained, mentioned in the first entry, they would be entitled to have the share in the property. And second entry will not be entitled to. If second entry is available and first is not, then second will be preferred than third. Third if is there and fourth is there and first two are not there. Likewise, nearer the relation will avoid the remote relationship is a principle which we have to keep in mind for that the list has been provided. Then I was talking about agnets and cognates. Two words I had uttered earlier, and that is um, full blood, half blood. I just touched upon the words and I left that particular part to be discussed later. Now, let us consider all those four words or the concepts together, and then we would be proceeding ahead. Now, agnet is a person who is related to the person about whose property we are talking about, the deceased person. The person who is related to the person whose property we are talking about with the chain of relationship wherein all main members are there. Like Kakachita Masa Miga. Your uncle's uh, paternal uncle's maternal uncle's son. In the whole relationship, all male members you will find in throughout the chain. They all are called as agnets. And where in the chain any female member comes, it is called as cognate relationship. The rule is for the patriarchal structures I'm talking about. The rule is that the uh, agnets will have preferential right over the cognates. If agnets are there, cognates will not have any kind of entitlement. Such kind of um, uh, preferential rights are not prevalent for Maru, Makha, Tayam, Aliya, Santana, that being the patriarchal structure. Okay, that we would discuss a little later. Point is that when a Hindu male person dies in the state, leaving behind property, his property shall devolve in class one. If class one here, which is provided in the schedule, is absent, there is nobody from class one, you, the property would be given to class one is provided. In the classification, at the end, you find that agnets and comments. I hope the concept of agnet and the concept of cognate is clear. In the chain of relationship, the whole chain, the person is connected with the whole chain, which consists of male members only. Then it is considered as 
agnet relationship agnet will prefer will be preferred over cognate cognate means that when a uh, female member is being placed in the throughout the chain any female member comes and it becomes cognate another two concepts which i had uttered earlier when any person is related or rather two brothers two sisters when they are related to each other in such a way when father and mother both are same they are called as full blood relationship amongst them father or mother if any of the party any father father or mother when they are uh, different then it is called as half blood now it will be possible in case if it is a polygamous practice wherein a man has got two wives two wives have got children so these children would be each other's brothers or sisters whatever but it would be half blood relationship in that half blood again there are two concepts to be understood consanguine relationship and uterine relationship consanguine when father is same and mother is different and uterine relationship when fathers are different and mother is same now it would be possible even amongst hindus now that if suppose she is a divorcee she may have a child from first husband she may have a child from second husband and the relationship between them would be half blood relationship uterine relationship would be so in a again for that rule has been provided in the law that full blood will be preferred over half blood when such kind of notions are very important first um, rather the person in class 1 here are absent and class 2 are to be taken into account and brothers real brother that is full blood relation is also uh, alive and half blood relation also is alive so to whom the property to be given okay so here we have to understand that full blood relationship will be preferred over the half blood relationship this is a law again okay? uterine relationship are not entitled to any kind of uh, entitlement over the property because it's a patriarchal structure that we have to keep in mind i hope this particular point is very very clear now when a hindu female dies in test the provision has been created for that also to whom the property shall be given and we find that Uh, the provisions have been incorporated in section 15 of hindu succession act section 14 provides for the property which is held by a hindu male female would be her individual property her own property and general rules have been provided when a person rather a female dies in this state jemha ekadi mahila hindu mahila hi mrutyu patra tayar na karta mrutya pavte तेव्हा तिच्या मालमत्तेचे अधिकार हस्तांतरित होण्यासाठी कोणाला लिगल हेअर म्हणून संबोधलं जावं याबद्दलची नियमावली कलम पंधरा मध्ये या हिंदू कायद्यामध्ये देण्यात आलेली आहे वारसा हक्काच्या कायद्यामध्ये देण्यात आलेली आहे लेट इस प्रोसीड आहे इट इज प्रोव्हायडेड दॅट वेन अ हिंदू फिमेल हॅज डायरी इन टेस्टेड हर प्रॉपर्टी शेल डिवॉल्व ऑन हर सन डॉटर इफ देर आर मोर देन वन son sons daughters and a husband if son or daughter is died prior to her death that is deceased prior to her then their children would be entitled so first entry which has been provided as 15a it provides for sons if a hindu female dies in this state her mother or rather the uh, if a mother dies a female dies in this state children that is sons as well as daughters if they are predeceased their sons and daughters along with husband all of them would be entitled to have the share in the property equally and simultaneously they will all are entitled but may it be possible that prior to the death of a lady her husband is predeceased or rather they are not there who are mentioned in first entry then it is the heirs of the husband if they are mother and father if they are not there then heirs of the husband and then mother Fa um excuse me please please go oh one point is to be very clear here uh, sorry for the interruption 
the point is first lay upon uh, hus husband children that is son and they are predeceased or uh, their son and daughters if they were, then husband says they are entitled to see not mother and father if we just uh, compare it with uh, 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 male person dying interested then we find that it is uh, uh, his mother who is being placed in class 1 but here when a hindu female dies in interested her mother or father does not play, have a place at first rank if son daughter their son daughter if they are predeceased and husband they are not there then it is husband's relatives husband heirs they are entitled to have the share in the property if they are not there then mother and father if they are not there then the heirs of father because see it's a patriarchal structure and if they are not there then we find that uh, mothers heirs they are entitled to this is how we have to understand if suppose uh, a lady or a male uh, female member dies in this state now certain general rules have been provided how there would be a distribution amongst those members who have been mentioned in class 1 and class 2 and there are certain further general rules which are applicable to uh, a situation when a male dies in this state or a female dies in this state before moving towards it i would like to give you some reference pertaining to the maruma khatayam and aliya santhana laws for them the provisions which have been cre created in this particular enactment they are about um, uh, immediately after uh, section 15 16 17 we find provisions pertaining to uh, the people who are being governed by the maruma khatayam and aliya santhana now the kind of discrimination that are available here the discriminations from the angle of matriarchal structure if they look at the patriarchy that we find uh, the absence of the you know, uh, provisions like agnate and cognate there is no difference okay uh, agnate and cognate they are placed on a similar situation if suppose that is uh, the rule pertaining to a male person dying in testate is applicable to marumakkathayam aliya sandhana people also the matriarchal structures also only the thing we have to keep in mind is there is no differentiation between or there is there are no preferences amongst the uh, agnates and cognates now the term agnates and cognates is well known to all of us i consider that moving ahead with a female member amongst marumakkathayam aliya sandhana if she dies then uh, what would be the situation then again preferential right along with the son daughter their if their predeceased their sons daughters the preferential right would be given to pay the mother if she is not there then in the second categorization it is husband and then so on and so forth you will find the categorization that has been mentioned some reference we have placed earlier like full blood is preferred over half blood then may it be possible that uh, the, rather the situations would be there that uh, two persons have died simultaneously then whose property shall devolve on whom even the law clarifies such also okay what would be the effect of remarriage what would be the effect if those two persons are died simultaneously and just gi giving you the passing references pertaining to it now here we find that presumption prevails what is presumption presumption it's a logic basically you don't need to worry about it that how to remember those many things which have been discussed in a short period of lecture presumption is there that the one who is born first will die first on the same line if suppose it is found that two persons have died simultaneously and do not we do not know who has died first then how to provide one's property to the other and the law says that the one who is born first that particular logic would be made applicable now marching ahead with see again one point i need to make it very clear that prior to fication that is prior to this hindu succession act there were certain disqualifications as like if a person suffers from physical and mental disabilities challenges the person was not entitled to have any share in the property but now such kind of disqualifying conditions are not there marching ahead with if suppose somebody gets converted conversion with a disqualification that is what we need to understand and we find that earlier the situations were different but now the person who has got converted 
maybe till that particular point of time whatever would be the entitled would be entitled to his successors will not be entitled to because it would be considered to be the civil death for that particular religion the person would be considered to be died for hindu religion and hence his successors will not be entitled to have any share in the property that is what we need to take into account moving further with there are certain notions called priya now when there is a chance that you people would be listening to even transfer of property or the property law and certain certain kind of notions of equivalent there you know also or rather you would be studying it on your own also property laws certain kind of similar provisions have been incorporated in this particular law wherein preferential rights to acquire the property in certain conditions have been provided under section 22 of the act now what it is now suppose the partition has been made everybody is provided with respect to properties and the person uh, who now owns his own share wants to dispose of his property he cannot go uh, and ask the third party those who are in nearby rather all other persons who are um, provided with the shares in the property he will have to ask them first that if you are willing to purchase my property and if they are giving whatever uh, market value is there so it is not so that whatever value they are providing he will have to get adjusted with so the reasonable price even he can expect and accordingly uh, only the thing we have to be bear in mind is that the preemption rather the entitlement preferential right is being created by this particular enactment now uh, special provisions have been created pertaining to the dwelling house and that have been uh, deleted by 2005 enactment 2005 not enactment sorry amendment for the beginners uh, a few words i have to make it clear to you as like if uh, I, i i would just refer back to you uh, rather give you a reference of Uh, professor morris's lecture wherein he has explained you what are enactments what is act when any act is made and that act is being uh, amended that is modified certain provisions are added some deleted some additional provisions have been incorporated therein it is called as process of amendment that has to happen in the parliament only parliament who in law has got power to amend it so this particular legislation was amended in the year 2005 for the whole nation as i have given you a reference for maharashtra and rest of the uh, states it occurred in 1994 it provided for major areas when we have to talk about uh, co-partnery rights are provided to the daughters so female members also are entitled to co-partnery rights another essential part to be noted is the pious obligation the doctrine of pious obligation has been deleted again this is very technical term you might not be aware of now when a person dies leaving behind some kind of debt who shall pay the debt it is the person who claims the entitlements over the property it is said that obligation also is carried along with the entitlement so it is not that you would be claiming only rights over the property the property is mortgaged then who will pay off if suppose some loan has been incurred then the basically the uh, doctrine of pious obligation obligation would be there it is pious pavitra asha prakarcha tumcha varti asnar dharmane ghalun dilela no obligation that was incorporated in the hindu succession act okay but in the year 2005 that has been deleted what what could be the reason behind it it is not so that you are not now liable to pay off the point is that laws have been modified property laws have been modified in such a way banking sector they have created their own standard forms of contract bank securitization enactment is there due to which this provision was not essential for which now after 2005 the pious obligation principle has no place in the existing uh, legislation along with the modifications with the amendment that has been taken away and last section is section 30 that gives reference to indian succession act now indian succession act as i have told you earlier that um, it is um, for parsis for christians how their properties will devolve when they die intestate that has been provided but along with that 
Indian Succession Act 1925 also provides for the uh, testamentary succession. I hope you are very clear. And the uh, point is that uh, anybody, may you belong to Hindu religion, Christian passes, but keep in mind for Muslims, it is unqualified personal law, which provides limitation on creation of will, that you cannot create will of the whole property. Will provisions are provided in Indian Succession Act from section 59 onwards. That is to be kept in mind. Anybody can create the will. It can be written in any doc, in any plain paper that needs to be signed by the person. If the person is not able to sign illiterate, may put his thumb. Two witnesses are required. This particular document is not necessarily to be registered anywhere. You can keep it any and that will hold good. Only the thing is that two witnesses are essential that are considered as unprivileged will. This will has got two kinds, privileged and unprivileged will. Unprivileged people like us, common people, and privileged will, when soldiers, they are marching towards war, actual war situations are there, they are going there, in. they cannot create the document and have witnesses, signatures over there. So for them, some kind of leniency has been provided. You people would be learning that later. Hindus are being governed under Indian Succession Act section 30 refers so Hindu Succession Act 30 refers so and thus poor Hindus intestate succession is being governed by the Hindu Succession Act whereas as section 30 of the act refers to Indian Succession Act it is the Indian Succession Act that provides for the testamentary succession except Muslims it is applicable to all marching ahead i would be very precise now within two minutes i would be ending up because time is running ahead uh, which certainly is not giving justice to the muslim personal law i can understand point is that for muslims it is uncodified muslim personal law which is purely based on their personal um, religious text and that is for that quran is the authority um, prior to Quran and after Quran, we need to understand prior to Quran, uh, cognates were not provided with any share, women were not provided with any share. Thus, prior to 2000 years, Quran came into way, Quran provided revolutionary changes. It's a revolutionary document which provided rights. It paved a way for the entitlement of women over the inheritance rights. Muslim personal law does not categorize in rather differentiate between self-acquired property and ancestral property as it, pro it is accepted in the Hindu personal law. Okay. For Sunnis and Shias, laws and the frictions that of uh, rather the uh, uh, fraction of entitlement that differs. Okay. And that cannot be elaborated even within half an hour or within one hour. For that, we need to refer to the books. But broadly, if when we look at the Muslim law, it is based on the uncodified Muslim personal law. It provides with the Quran, the revolutionary law that provides entitlement to females also. Only the thing is that the uh, limitations have been provided that everybody's share is provided and those people who are entitled to have share they are called as quranic sharers two principles i'm touching upon one is doctrine of all and doctrine of rad it is possible that each person is provided with a respective share with the fraction of shares rather the everybody may get a property and still some share may be uh, 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 without distribution that is left untouched or residuary. So that particular residuary would be further distributed amongst uh, further relatives for which the rules are provided. It is called as doctrine of increase. And sometimes it ha so happens that everybody is provided with the fractions and property is less. Then what to do with? Because there are some other relatives also who are entitled to for which that particular property, everybody's small part would be taken away, fraction would be taken away, so as to pacify the needs of others, say for the entitlement of others, which is called as doctrine of rank. These are the basic things which we have to keep in mind under the Muslim personal law, as there is no bifurcation between self-acquired property and ancestral property. One point is to be very clear, in ancestral property, 
nobody can create the will unless and until all others are provided with the respective shares it is only when uh, it is your separate property it is your self acquired property you can create the will for the whole property and you can rather create a situation wherein those otherwise would have been entitled to have the share they are not now entitled to because you are created will similar is not the situation in case of muslim personal law because more than two third of the property you cannot create the will such kind of restriction so a kind of just situation has been created under the muslim personal law so that all the quranic sharers would be entitled to have a share in the property male as well as female and admit and cognates as well but it is purely uncodified personal law that is what we need to keep in mind this was just a broad outline pertaining to the laws pertaining to the succession i thank everybody for the patient listening if you have any kind of queries you may ask thank you thank you madam over to us over to thank you madam we have got so many over. question yes yes but due to time constraint i am asking some questions uh, one questions received from marathi language is that hmm jar swata cha mulga jivant astana vadilani tacha putnya cha hakkat mrutyupatra karun dile tar chalel ka ठीक आहे प्रश्न मराठी मधून आहे उत्तरही मी मराठी मधून देणं कदाचित अपेक्षित आहे त्यामुळे जास्ती चांगल्या रीतीने ही संज्ञा करून येईल कस आहे की हिंदू कायद्यानुसार एखादी व्यक्ती जर स्वत कमवलेली मालमत्ता असेल तर त्या मालमत्तेवरती मृत्यूपत्र करू शकते कोणाच्याही नावाने त्याच्यासाठी मुलगा जिवंत असतानाचा मुद्दा आहे परंतु मुलगा जिवंत आहे तुमची मालमत्ता ही वडिलोपार्जित मालमत्ता आहे आणि वडिलांनी मुलाचा विचार न करता ती मालमत्ता सगळीच्या सगळी पुतण्याला करून दिली ते मात्र चालत नाही स्व अर्जित मालमत्ता या मालमत्तेवरती फक्त ज्या व्यक्तीने ती कमावलेली आहे त्या व्यक्तीचा अधिकार असतो आणि त्यामुळे मृत्यू पावण्यापूर्वी अशा व्यक्तीने मृत्यूपत्र जर बनवलं पुतण्याच्या नावाने किंवा अगदी त्रयस्थाच्या नावाने मुलगा जिवंत असताना सुद्धा तरी सुद्धा कायद्याची तिथे कुठेही आडकाठी येत नाही मॅम थँक यू फॉर द फ्रुटफुल सेशन बट सम पार्टिसिपेंट हॅव फ्यू क्वेरीज इफ यू सॅटिस्फाय दॅम विथ युअर वर्ड वी विल बी ब्लेस्ड फाईन 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 मॅम फाईन फाईन प्रोसिड आहे thank you ma'am ma'am the first question is a child is adopted then after that adoption the parents get divorced mm. so in this case will that child be able to claim right for the grandparent property okay very fine question uh one point is to be further i i i mean i need to be very clear on the point i need to make it clear for all of us there are certain rules in the hindu adoption and maintenance act now as i have told you i have not touched upon the provisions that are provided in hindu adoption and maintenance act once an adoption always an adoption adoption manje uh, uh, do i need to express it in marathi the one who has asked the question shall i proceed in english question uh, is in english fine english fine. language fine it will be fine so uh -huh. so fine fine point is that uh, once adoption always adoption so the position of a child will not differ at all even if the parents get separated by the orders of court for the by the divorce okay so the entitlement will remain same right would be able to claim the entitlement over grandparents property thank you very much ma'am thank you so we are now coming towards the end of session i request dr pratibha girbhane ma'am assistant professor in mp law college aurangabad to give her concluding remarks for this session dr pratibha girbhane ma'am please take the mic uh, thank you nikhil uh, in today's webinar as you all know jik was family law 
for which we were having to speak with okay, Dr. Sapkar sir and uh, Dr. Aparna Kutapalli madam uh, who have enlightened all of us, uh, who have delivered their lectures in very informative way and they have tried to cover some of the important topics in family law. Our first speaker, Advocate Sapkar sir, he has dealt with concept of marriage under Hindu and Muslim law wherein he has enlightened uh, us all on the concepts like what is marriage, uh, what are conditions for valid marriage, kinds of marriages, and various matrimonial remedies available under Hindu as well as Muslim law in very precise way. Our second speaker, Dr. Aparna Kutapalli, madam, she started with the brief introduction of the uh, topic, uh, wherein she has mentioned that family law is a law uh, which uh, deals with the family and domestic relationship. This law changes with change in the religion. Further, this is a law which covers uh, various areas like marriage, adoption, succession, divorce, maintenance, guardianship and custody. Afterwards, she has tried uh, to deal with uh, in very precise way with the topic succession and inheritance under uh, Hindu law, wherein she has dealt with uh, full blood relationship, half blood relationship, coparsonary system, what is uh, coparsonary system, who is Hindu, then uh, how the property is devolved in uh, between the hairs of female and male Hindu who dies in this. She also has focused on testamentary succession also, and at last she had a few words on uh, Muslim succession law. Uh, here, uh, at the end, I would like to add something that there are certain uh, controversies or controversial issues which are uh, very much important in family law, which on your own participants can try to cover. Say, for example, uh, uniform civil code, living relationship, certain judgments of Supreme Court like uh, triple talaq case, hadiyah case, and impact of Supreme Court when the Supreme Court uh, judgments related with striking down of our, uh, section 377, um, 97 of IPC. So these also on your own, you can try to cover. Uh, actually, this family law subject is very vast. In two semesters, students try to study this subject. But our speakers have tried to cover uh, these important aspects in very short time, in very nice and precise way. So for that, I'm very thankful to them. And uh, at last, I will conclude here by wishing you all best of luck and, th and also thankful to the organizers for giving me opportunity to conclude today's session. Thank you all. Thank you, ma'am, for your concluding remarks. Now, we have come towards the end of session. But without word of thanks, everything still remains incomplete. I firstly thank Advocate Vidi Sapkal, sir, uh, for his guidance regarding matrimonial remedies, and Dr. Aparna Kotapale, ma'am, for the topic succession and inheritance. Indeed, the participants are blessed. I thank the organizers for conducting such wonderful session. And lastly, the participants for making this session a grand success. Thank you one and all. Now, tomorrow, we would have our fifth session. I request the participants to please attend that. Thank you very much. Shall we end the meeting, sir? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.